Hi, I'm Shannon, owner of Pahrump Early Learning Academy, where we are more than just childcare. Hi, I'm Monique Mitchell with KPVM Television. My children attend Pella and they love it. The curriculum they have is pretty amazing and my children learn what they need at their level. Not only are the children learning, they're having fun and that's what matters. I like Pella. They help you with your homework and it's fun. Give us a call today to tour our facility at 751-5335. News 46 is brought to you by Comfort Hospice Care, where we give our patients and their loved ones peace of mind, knowing we provide the highest quality of care 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. For more information, call 751-0349. News is also brought to you by Golden Casino Group, where you'll always find great fun, good food, and fantastic entertainment, all at Gold Town, Lakeside, and the Pahrump Nugget. Tonight on News 46, accusations are made regarding a candidate for sheriff. Pahrump Valley Glass holds a ribbon cutting, and Sheriff DeMeo speaks about the Margay Edwards case. News 46 starts now. You're watching KPVM News 46 with Deanna O'Donnell. News 46, local coverage you can count on. Good evening, it's Thursday, October 2nd, 2014. I'm Deanna O'Donnell for News 46. We spoke to candidate Sharon Worley today about accusations being made that an instructor signed off on her forms and falsified a record regarding her passing a defensive tactic course required for her to become sheriff. Worley told News 46 that Nevada Post, which is an organization for police officers' standards and training, has no basis for an investigation and no investigation will be conducted. District Attorney Brian Kunze also confirmed that no in investigation will be conducted by Nevada Post post. Sharon declined to go on camera. However, Assistant Sheriff Rick Marshall, who is an instructor, told us about the requirements for the Nye County Sheriff's Office. Nevada Post is the Nevada Peace Officer Standards and Training Commission. They're the regulatory agency that oversees the certifying of peace officers in the state of Nevada. They also oversee certifying lesson plans and certifying the in-service training that our officers must complete. Um, basically, once you graduate the academy, whether it's a Category 3, which is jail academies, whether it's Category 2, which is typically your bailiffs or your fishing game or parole and probation officers, or Category 1, which is typically your street officers, um, officers are required to complete certain annual in-service training. That of, includes administrators, right, too? Absolutely. Of those are firearms training, defensive tactics, uh, handcuffing, weapon retention, and if you use like a baton or a taser or pepper spray, non-lethal uh, weapons, then you have to recertify on those as well. And it's any officer all the way up to the administrator of the agency. Is security officers also required to pass these? I'm not sure what security officer requirements are because we don't have security officers on our agency. So tell me a little bit about uh, these exams and uh, uh, we've heard that maybe some records were falsified on uh, Sharon Worley, who is a candidate for Nye County Sheriff's. Do you know anything about that? I know nothing about that. Uh, I can only speak to what we do on our agency. And our agency, uh, our instructors have forms that they fill out. Usually there's two instructors uh, grading the students as they go through the class. I'm a defensive tactics instructor. I'm a uh, baton instructor. I'm a taser instructor. I'm a uh, pepper spray instructor. I hold um, instructor levels. It's called instruct the instructor so I can actually certify trainers. And we are very rigid and very strict in it. Um, our people have to pass the course to a uh, acceptable level that the instructors review. And we have failed people and then we put them through remedial training and then they pass. So if you have two instructors in a class, do they both have to sign off? No, we have a lead instructor and then it's called a primary instructor and a secondary instructor. They do confer with one another on whether somebody has passed or not or if that person 
is what we call on the bubble of passing or not, then they'll confer with each other. It's many times they're asked to go back through uh, the course the student is to make sure that they get it right. And those reports are coming from one instructor telling News 46 that, in fact, she failed those exams. But once again, Nevada Post says that no investigation, no falsified records are uh, being investigated right now. We have also requested that Sharon's choice for second in command, Brent Moody, contact us so that we may ask about his reportedly having to go away for five months to the academy. Moody has allegedly not been a certified law enforcement officer since 2003, and according to authorities, if you are not active for at least five years, the law states that the sheriff can hire him as a civilian or he must pass all the exams required for the department. We have yet to get a response. We'll keep you posted. Nye County Sheriff Tony DeMeo spoke to News 46 about the woman's body that was located off Hafen Ranch Road a week ago. The female 27-year-old Margay Edwards license was found on her body, but her car and cell phone are reportedly still missing. Edwards was a resident of Los Osos, but was allegedly renting a hotel room in Las Vegas at the time that she died. According to reports, Margay studied business administration and financial services at San Diego State University, but did not graduate. The victim last attended the school in 2000. 13 and did not register for classes this semester. Sheriff's officials are looking for a 2014 blue Hyundai Accent rental car she was last seen driving. It has a California license plate of 7ESZ966. We identified the deceased as uh, Margay Edwards from California and we've been in contact with the family and right now we're conducting an investigation. So uh, her body was located by two uh, quad riders, uh, ATV that's correct. They were in the area, uh, of course, in the desert area. We have a lot of quad activity out here, and they were uh, riding their quads, and they came across uh, uh, Miss Edwards. She was uh, pretty uh, decomposed, right? There was evidence of decompo decomposition. And then uh, that area right there is on the end of a dirt path. There seems to be a little bit of debris. There's been some reports that that was an area where there's frequent uh, people partying. I was out there. There's no evidence of partying. There's some loose debris, but there's no, no evidence of a party out there, partying out there. Does she have any connections here to prom? We know that she had uh, that she's in contact with, with people in Nevada, and we've been in contact with them, and they've been very cooperative. She uh, was driving a rental car, right? That's correct. And then the rental car has still not been located? That's correct. We're still looking for that vehicle. We, we're, and right now we're stating that the vehicle is missing, and we're looking for that vehicle. Are you still looking for people who might have been with her in days prior to this? We're uh, right now the death is undetermined. We're not. Uh, it's just, we're c considering and classifying the death as suspicious, and we're conducting a criminal investigation. So that's where we're at right now with the case. Uh, we, we've had sightings with Margay Edwards within a community, and right now what we're trying to do is find out um, what happened to Margay, and and that's the what we're looking at right now because the family has a, a right to know. And uh, we're concerned about, uh, you know, making sure that, they, uh, that we follow every lead we get and we have a uh, conclusion to investigation based upon uh, what we determine. Her body was transported to the Clark County Coroner. Has it been subsequently transported to Texas? We have a contract to Clark County Coroner's Office and uh, Miss Edwards was uh, transported to uh, Clark County Coroner's Office. They're doing the uh, forensic autopsy. Do you have any other evidence that... Uh that the, this is suspicious or is it just the fact that she was out there in the desert area? We're looking into this as a criminal investigation. That is the most prudent thing to do uh, with this. So until, uh, and that's, a, that's the area we're doing right now. That's, that's the, the uh, and that's the area of the investigation we're doing right now is we're considering it a criminal case and uh, the death is classified as suspicious. And uh, was she reported missing prior to this? No. Once again, if you have any information regarding the car police are looking for, which is a 2014 blue Hyundai Accent, California license plate number 7ESZ966, or any other information regarding this case, please call the Nye County Sheriff's Office at 751-7000. News 46 will be back in just a moment. This portion of the news is brought to you by Inspiration Senior Living, where we provide affordable elegance to Pahrump area seniors. Give us a call at 751-2300 and make an appointment to tour our community. Welcome back to News 46. 
Pluto may in fact be a planet. I know that this is disturbing to some of you going back and forth on this one. Ever since astronomer Clyde Tombaugh at the Lowell Observatory in Flagstaff, Arizona discovered it on February 18, 1930, we believe that we live in a solar system with nine planets. Then along came the International Astronomical Union, the group that gets to name planetary bodies. In 2006, it came up with some rules for what is and what is not a planet. The group decided Pluto didn't make the grade. It was demoted to a dwarf planet, leaving our solar system with just just eight planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. The Union says a planet is a celestial body that, number one, orbits the sun, number two, is round or nearly round, and number three, has cleared the neighborhood around its orbit. Pluto orbits the sun and it's round. It got kicked out of as a planet because of rule number three. The Astronomical Union said Pluto was too small to knock other space rocks out of its path as it orbits the sun. But the group's definitions and the public's attachment to tiny Pluto sparked lots of debate. They also said that Pluto is too far from the sun to be a planet. But the other eight planets have their differences as well. There's a, lot, there's a new mission going to Pluto in July of next year, Planet or No Planet. It promises to give lots of new information. Prompt Valley Glass cut a ribbon this morning with the Prompt Valley Chamber of Commerce. Thank you all for coming today. We're delighted to be here this morning to welcome Steve Neal and to celebrate the opening of his storefront for Prompt Valley Glass. Steve came to the chamber a few months back to tell us about his new storefront to share his excitement with us. He has been providing local glass service for three years. At the beginning of this fourth year, he's taken the next step and opened a storefront to the public. He's thrilled to be able to offer public service by coming to see displays and the products that he offers. Um, thanks to KPVM for showing up and welcoming him as well. And um, for any of your glass needs, come see Steve. Okay. Yeah. All right. Nice. Yay. Basically, uh, anything commercial or residential, uh, news, new repairs, you know, whatever comes up. Um, you opened a storefront here on Oxbow, and uh, people can come in and look at your displays, uh, place orders as well. That's right. Uh, if, if there's anything you need, if you got a sample, you can bring it in, and we can hunt it down for you, or uh, we can come out to the sh to your house or shop and find out what you need and, and get everything ordered. Everything from showers, mirrors, tabletops, storefronts, solar screens. Solar screens, bug screens, you name it. And so uh, you guys also install all these two as well. Absolutely. Tell me a little bit more about that. Um, well, we've been, uh, I've been doing this now for about 38 years. So, you know, there's, I still find things that I haven't done. <laughs> but, you know, we keep plugging along. Um, I, I enjoy my work, so, you know. So this is a, all kind of like a building uh, glass um, for, uh, for uh, actual dwellings? Yes. And so, so not auto glass, right? No auto glass. Um, we do work on RVs and uh, uh, stuff like that, you know. So we help them out as well whenever we can. How can people call you for a quote? Um, get on, get a hold of me on the internet. You can call me by phone. What's phone number? Uh, seven seven five seven five one zero nine zero nine. And then your website? Uh, uh, Fat Boy Express. That's a, that's my email, uh, or you can go to uh, PahrumpValleyGlass.com. Congratulations on the ribbon cutting. The coroner in Las Vegas has issued a final ruling in the accidental shooting death of a 39-year-old Arizona gun instructor by a 9-year-old girl using an automatic Uzi. Preliminary findings that Charles Joseph Vaca Jr.'s death from a single gunshot wound to the head was an accident. Vaca lived in Lake Havasu, Arizona. He died August 25th, shortly after being flown by medical helicopter about 60 miles from the last, last stop outdoor shooting range in White Hills, Arizona, to University Medical Center in in Las Vegas. Well, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Desert View Hospital is holding a special right now for mammograms. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and every year we try to make sure that we're doing something specifically related to that. So this month, what we are doing um, for this year, for October, is we are offering mammograms for a discounted rate of $75. Um, that's all inclusive, so that includes the mammogram itself, plus the read from the radiologist, which is obviously needed. So $75, it is for patients who are coming in not using their insurance, so they can, they can choose to use their insurance or not, but if they decide that they want the $75 rate, they would 
would not use their insurance for that. They would come up, they'd pay $75 at the time of the service, and they would be know that they didn't have to pay anything else for that. So very excited about that. That's a good deal, but if you want to use your insurance, it's a great place to come and get your mammogram. And of course. How often should people get those done? You know, I'm not clinical, <laughs> but mammograms should happen every year for people who are over the age of 40 or if they have a family history of breast cancer. So you want to make sure that you're always taking precautions. You know, likewise also, if you are in your 20s and you are concerned, it's better to be safe than sorry. We actually are one of the only facilities in town that has mammograms, and we are the only facility that offers digital mammography, which allows the images to be seen in higher definition with more detail, which obviously can help prevent, you know, help people be able to see things a little bit better. And so uh, get the uh, order for the mammogram. You can uh, pay for it $75 here at Desert Rio Hospital. Really quick and easy, actually. Very quick, very easy. You know, we are, are you know, mammograms are never comfortable for women. It's, it's a test a lot of women don't look forward to having, you know, something that is necessary. So it's definitely not something that should be put off. You know, but with this promotion this month, too, we're really hoping that we can get some people, some ladies to come in who maybe, you know, they don't have insurance and they've never been able to afford it before you know and they've put it off for one reason or the other you know we encourage them all to come in you know go see your doctor and get the order for it come in you know get it scheduled and that way you can have you know rest assured that you're safe and you're okay. And then a lot of uh, women will actually be getting uh, something in the mail that is just a little card that encourages them to come in and get a mammogram. And anybody who comes in in the month of October, November, or December and gets a mammogram will get one of these beautiful little mason jar tumblers that we've provided, you know, while supplies last, of course. We have quite a few, but they do go very fast. So very exciting. Is there a number to call here at the hospital to find out more information? They can call our main phone number, which is 775-751-7500, and then they can be directed to radiology that way. Thanks so much, Megan. When we come back from this break, your news across Nevada. This portion of the news is brought to you by Nathan Adelson Hospice. Proud to be the hospice of choice in Pahrump for 15 years. Please call 775-751-6700 to find out how Nathan Adelson can assist you. 70-Majority Leader Harry Reid has appointed the president of Opportunity Village Foundation to serve on the National Council on Disability. Bob Brown, a past publisher of the Las Vegas Review-Journal, also has served on the board of the Special Olympics of Nevada. The federal agency advises the president, Congress, and other federal agencies about policies that affect people with disabilities. The western population of the yellow-billed cuckoo will be protected as a threatened species under the Endangered Species Act, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service announced today. The service determined that listing a distinct population segment of the bird in portions of 12 western states, Canada and Mexico, is warranted. In the United States, the distinct population segment will cover parts of Arizona, California, Colorado, Idaho, Nevada, New Mexico, Texas, Utah, Wyoming, Montana, Oregon, and Washington. The western population of the yellow-billed cuckoo, an insect-eating bird found in riparian woodland habitats, winters in South America and breeds in western North America. Once abundant in the United States, populations have declined for several decades, primarily due to the severe loss of degradation and fragmentation of its riparian habitat as a result of conversion to agriculture, dam construction, river flow management, and riverbank protection. Overgrazing and invasive exotic plants have also contributed to the decline. Declines. State officials say Nevada gaming revenue was down nearly 4% in August compared with a year earlier, largely due to a drop in the winnings on the Las Vegas Strip. The Nevada Gaming Control Board officials said Friday that casinos brought in $920 million in August, down from $955 million a year ago. Revenue on the Las Vegas Strip was down 6% year over year to $553 million, while downtown revenue went up 4% to $35 million. Reno gambling revenues were down 2% to 50%. 3 million. South Lake Tahoe had a banner month. Casinos won 28 million, which is up 33% year over year. The state collected $51 million in taxes on the August winnings. That's down 1% from last August. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. That's your news across Nevada.
This is the first business brief for Thursday, October 2nd. I'm Angela Miles. GM may stand for generous margins. General Motors CEO Mary Barra predicts the operating margin for North America will reach 10% by 2016 and its European business will return to profit within two years. Barra also forecasts a global earnings margin of 9 to 10%. The car company will expand manufacturing in China with five new plants by 2018. Also, GM vehicles will be built on fewer platforms with 20% fewer parts. Discounts drove sales of pickup trucks in September. GM and Chrysler auto sales surged 19 percent compared to last year. Ford, however, had a 2.7 percent decline. And Pepsi is testing a sugar alternative. The soda is called Pepsi True and will be available by mid-October. It contains stevia and has 30 percent less sugar. It will also only be sold on Amazon. That's the First Business Brief. I'm Angela Miles. Thanks so much, Angela. Weekend Sports is brought to you by Wolfenstein Construction. Don't forget to go support the Prompt by High School Trojans football team tonight at 7 p.m. against the Cheyenne Desert Shields. It's $5 for adults, $2 for seniors and students to attend. This is a league matchup, and Prompt needs to pull off a win against the 2-1 team. Prompt is currently 1-2. Anticipate a lot of excitement on the ground as both teams find their success in the run game. The girls' volleyball faces Cheyenne today as well as they travel to North Las Vegas for their league about. Prump by High School girls soccer is coming off a tough loss to Sierra Vista. Sierra Vista won 5-3 making the girls soccer team 3-2 in league. This is an extremely talented young team who lost seven seniors last year. Keep looking for success from this team. The Prump by High School boys soccer team got their first league win on Tuesday against Sierra Vista beating the Mountain Lions 4-3. Hopefully their momentum will carry over to today as both the Prump by High School boys and girls soccer teams travel to Cheyenne for another league match. Matchup. When we come back from this break, your weather with Noah Beacon. News 46 weather is brought to you by your local dairy farmers. Dairy products are very important in maintaining a healthy body. Hello and welcome back to News 46. Today is Thursday, October 2nd. Today we had sunny skies with a high of 83 degrees. Your average temperature at the time of year is 87 degrees, so it was a little cooler outside than it usually is, but that's all right. Winds were coming from the east today at 5 miles per hour with gusts up to 11 miles per hour, so we had some low to moderate winds. The UV index today was 7, which is high. Humidity was at 9% today. Sunrise was at 640 this morning, and the record high in 1980 was 100 degrees. Well, tonight we'll have clear skies with a low of 56 degrees. Your average temperature at this time of year is 64 degrees. Winds will be coming from the northeast at 4 miles per hour with a gust up to 6 miles per hour, so we'll have low winds. Humidity will be at 16%. Sunset will be at 626 p.m. And the record low in 1971 was 43 degrees. Well, tomorrow we'll have sunny skies with a high of 92 degrees and a low of 60 degrees. Winds will be coming from the east-northeast at 3 miles per hour with gusts up to 6 miles per hour, so our low winds will be sticking around. Humidity will be at 11 percent, sunrise will be at 641 a.m., and the UV index will be 7, which is high. For our 7-day forecast, we'll have lots of sunshine. Your high temperatures will be starting off in the low 90s, but they might be going down into the high 80s about mid-next week, and your low temperatures will be pretty much staying in the low 60s. Thanks so much, Noah. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of News 46. From everyone up here at KPVM-TV, including Patrick, Darby, and Noah, and myself, have a great night. We'll see you back here tomorrow. It's Friday.